Chuck Althausen, Design Engineer at Advanced Adapters. Today we're going to be going over a little piece of test equipment we have here to test uh, transfer cases. This particular piece of test equipment is called a four-square dyno. Uh, it's a method to test two transfer cases back to back uh, so that if you have a modification that you want to make to a transfer case, you can compare it to the old design. Today we're going to be reviewing some of the components that make up this four-square dyno and uh, I'll let you know how exactly it works. Four-square dynos have been an important uh, piece of testing equipment in the gear uh, box design industry for quite a while now. Um, this happens to be a specific application in that we're testing two transfer cases. But generally speaking, you would have uh, a gear set that you wanted to test um, for various lubrication features and, and strength features. Uh, we're testing a whole uh, gear box by itself. The concept of the four square dyno is basically to have power running in a loop. In this certain application, we have power going from the inputs of both transfer cases and connecting through the loop uh, via the front outputs of the transfer case. The whole system is driven via an electric motor with a variable frequency drive, and torque is in actuated into the system via a turnbuckle. The way that we're inducing torque into this core square dyno is via the use of a turnbuckle. The turnbuckle rotates the slave transfer case uh, around its center line, which phases the U joints that connect the drive shaft uh, out of phase. That out of phasing creates a torque in the loop and provides uh, the loading conditions that we need to test the transfer case. From an engineering sense, we know that if you know torque and speed, you can calculate power. Well, in this case, we know our torque because we've actuated it to this turnbuckle, which will later be replaced by a load cell. And we know speed via the RPM readout on our VFP. So we can calculate the amount of power going through this transfer case setup which allows us to test different power applications in different levels for various clocking angles and various gear ratio combinations. The power flow in the system goes from the rear output of the test transfer case through the case, which is then gear reduced, through the drive shaft to the next transfer case, which is at the same low range ratio, and back through the input. And the input shaft and the uh, front output shaft are both spinning at different speeds, depending on the gear ratio. One of the tests that we're currently running on this uh, four-speed unit is uh, validation of our new tapered roller bearing design that we have uh, introduced into the new four-speed. Um, this test will basically allow us to load the bearings as they would in the vehicle without having to drive the vehicle around. Um, this is one of the ways that we would like to check reliability and longevity on these new Atlas four-speed transfer cases. Okay, now we're gonna turn this machine on uh, via the uh, variable frequency drive here. We currently have the machine set at about 750 RPMs, which uh, represented about 40 miles an hour in low range on our test vehicle. Here we go. Closes our variable frequency drive here. Uh, we're running about 40% motor load right now, which is uh, a little under 10 horsepower. Um, you'll notice that the motor load is uh, fluctuating a little bit. That's because the oil is cold right now and it's not working as efficiently as it will when it's hot. Um, all the other settings on here are speed, voltage, and amperage. We're primarily concerned with just speed and load on the motor. We're operating under a no load condition. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of load. I need to turn the turnbuckle a couple times to get the backlash out of the system. As I'm doing this, the motor load on our drive motor is going up. We'll get to a certain point where all the backlash is out of all the gears, and now I have to start applying load with a wrench. As we apply more load, the gears will begin to wind a little bit more. In a few 
future we plan to take the manual adjustment out of here and make it a more automated process which will make it a little bit more accurate and safe to the operator.